Welcome, everybody. I am Alexa Carr. I do ecosystem marketing here at Algorand. Still relatively new um, to Algorand, so it's been great getting to meet everyone in the community and in the broader ecosystem, including our guests here today. We have John Clark and Owen Colgrove, who are the founders of AlgoFi. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Alexa. Of course. So you guys are looking ahead to a mainnet launch later this year for the AlgoFi, which is the decentralized bank and lending market on Algorand. Why don't we start with your backgrounds? Tell me about where you came from, what led you to the blockchain space, where the idea for AlgoFi came from. Sure. So John and I met working together at Citadel. There I was making quantitative strategies and John was trading them. And before we were there, uh, John could speak to his background and I was going a more academic route. I did my PhD in particle physics and was doing research over at CERN uh, through my university at Santa Barbara. Yeah, and before uh, working uh, with Owen uh, in the hedge fund space, I, I finished an undergrad at MIT studying math and CS. And uh, at the beginning uh, of college, I sort of, I was potentially going to do something more uh, in academic science. Uh, so I did some internships, uh, one at NASA that I thought was really interesting. Um, but then as I progressed uh, through college, I, I got really interested in markets and sort of went down a more uh, financial uh, markets trading path. Cool. And so what, um, talk a little bit about what led you to blockchain and Algorand, but blockchain in general. Sure. I think both of us had been pulled into crypto previously in our lives. So for me, I got really interested in Ethereum in like 2015. And in my spare time, I was kind of like messing around with that. And I guess, you know, life caught up with me. I got really involved with other stuff and kind of forgot about that. But then flashing forward to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, tired of my time in traditional finance. I don't know what I necessarily want to do. And I'm thinking about starting a company. I was really drawn to crypto because a ton of innovation was happening there. And I just felt like it was something I wanted to be a part of. So that was what got me excited about it. What about you, John? Yeah, so I heard about Bitcoin for the first time in 2014 through something pretty uh, uh, unique. They'd given every freshman at MIT $100 in Bitcoin, and they just said, have at it. So I was trading around with it, uh, like when the exchanges came out. I remember distinctly one day I spent like three hours in the library sending cryptos from one exchange to another to collect like a 30% uh, spread. And so I just thought it was really cool, the fact that it's such a, it's just such a new and unique uh, and inefficient market. And over time, you can see it get more efficient and more organized. So I thought that was really cool. But I didn't do much other than kind of follow the developments. And then in 2020, when a lot of DeFi applications were being built on Ethereum, I started getting really excited about it again because I saw what I thought to be the early stages of a new financial system, more than just uh, an environment for crypto holders to speculate on um, you know, lending uh, and trading uh, opportunities. So I thought that was really cool. And you know, like oh, I'm at the end of uh, my tenure in traditional finance, I was kind of getting uh, a little bored and wanted to do something new. And so going out and starting uh, something in DeFi made sense. Cool. So yeah, so yeah, so talk about AlgoFi, talk about where you're at now, how it's been on testnet, what, what's still to come between now and, and main that launch. Yeah, um, John and I, when we first started, we're doing a number of different things because entering a new space, you have to ideate a bit and try to figure out what needs to be done, what makes sense to work on. And through this natural process of kind of like learning and evaluating what we thought was going to work, we kind of reached a really high degree of conviction that Ethereum as a network was kind of struggling to keep up with the amount of innovation that was happening there. And we became really confident that layer one proof of stake competitors were really going to grow and, and in the long term be where DeFi really flourishes. So we wanted to go and kind of take advantage of those ecosystems, but they didn't really exist yet. So that kind of led us to the idea that building protocols in that space was the right thing to do. And then Algorand is the blockchain we particularly liked the most. And it was also somewhere where I think at that time there was less building compared to some of the other incumbents. So we were like, it doesn't really make sense. Like it seems like people are really missing something. So why don't we just like really zero in on that opportunity and kind of put all of our effort into it? And that's kind of how we got 
settle on the idea of AlgoFi, which I guess John will get into. Yeah, so uh, out, you know, for us, we saw a few pro a few projects, uh, you know, had been uh, being built, and you know, one like Yieldly uh, was already on the mainnet. But we saw this uh, opportunity in the uh, lending space. So you know, I think it makes sense for an early uh, DeFi ecosystem to have the ability to, when there are a few major tokens, uh, earn you know passive income, but also uh, be able to borrow to do uh, certain things. Uh, like at leverage uh, and short. So this is just a very clear uh, financial primitive that you should have within a new financial system. So I think you know that's that's uh, where we got the idea for AlgoFi. But then Owen and I were thinking, you know, this can become uh, a lot bigger. Uh, and you know, Owen can get uh, more into that. But beyond lending and building that initial protocol, I think there's an opportunity to build more uh, banking infrastructure. Because Algorand is fast, cheap, and scalable, unlike a lot of uh, networks, which is something that if you're building a you know set of banking infrastructure, it needs that technology. Um, and I and I also think that Algorand, given the corporation, is uniquely positioned to attract uh, users for something like this. So, uh, if you have any uh, thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, I guess you know to get a little bit into Algofi too. Um, yeah. You know, as, what, what we're looking to do is build a decentralized lending market. And so to kind of get into the details of how that will work for users, it's like if you're an Algorand holder, you can come put your money into the protocol. It will start passively earning interest, and you'll be able to use that as collateral to borrow other tokens against. And so a good example might be stable coins like USDC. Mm -hmm. And so those, uh, once you've borrowed those, you can do what you want with them. And one common use case will be users can take those, they can settle them into fiat directly into their bank account. And like John's saying, we're trying to figure out ways that we can provide a railway for that to make it really simple and easy to use. Because right now, I think one one thing that could help the ecosystem would be for there to be more entry and exit points for, for dollars. Sure. It's going to be a little tough to get them on and off the current system. And so, so the idea is we're going to start giving utility directly to people who have these different tokens. And so they can start earning interest like I was saying, you can get the fiat loan settled into your bank account. You could also then, for instance, through Tiny Man, which is coming online shortly, if you wanted to instead, you could go trade those stable coins for more Algorand, and you could actually get a leveraged position, all without ever using a centralized counterparty. And so that's what's kind of exciting about DeFi, is you can start to put together these different platforms and operations and get exposure to all kinds of interesting financial, you know, financial machinery that you couldn't otherwise easily. Uh, without necessarily maybe going through a, a third party. And so I just wanted to touch a little bit more on the details around that. And then speaking about banking services, I think mm -hmm. I agree with John completely. Like, that is something that we are really excited about. We think in the long run there's a really big opportunity to help kind of redefine what the banking system looks like. And so there's a lot of neobanks already today in the traditional startup world working to make more efficient digital banking and things like that. But no one's really started to really combine that with crypto yet because it's such a new space. And so the idea that we have is taking something like a crypto native bank that's powered by DeFi. So you have already through this protocol we're describing ways to natively earn interest and kind of like convert your money around as you need to. And to provide that to users so that they can start to get something that feels like a traditional banking experience without a central custody providing uh, thir you know, third party. So it's a really exciting way in which we could innovate. And like John was saying, it's something that I think Algorand and maybe a few other competitors are uniquely delivered or uniquely positioned to help deliver. And so it's something that I think is just now really becoming possible, which is part of why I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. And I love that talking about building out the, the whole ecosystem. And you mentioned Tiny Man, which is launching soon, and Yieldly, which has obviously been live. Have you been talking to those those guys or any others in the ecosystem? And how's that going? Yeah, we you know we're in touch with some of the other uh, projects uh, that are building right now. There's been a lot of it's so early, and and there are so few teams that honestly we exchange thoughts on uh, like best practices for development, um, ways to use the AVM to the fullest, the different languages that we're programming in like PyTeal. So there, you know, I think there's a lot of crosstalk there, and then we're also speculating on like the really interesting. Uh, interoperability that Owen was talking about uh, yeah. we can uh, integrate, you know, the fact there's a lot of things that a lending market um, and, and DAX can do together. So we're excited to, uh, work, you know, work together with uh, uh, these yeah. projects. 
So then I can imagine like down the line there will be people building out uh, yield farms and, and you know derivatives on top of our uh, yield sources that'll you know sort of uh, you know uh, make it more uh, robust and, and interesting interoperability at a higher level. Yeah, and you mentioned a little bit about this, I think, but coming into Algorand and building, I'd love to hear about your experience from, from the development side. I think as a developer, we found Algorand pretty nice to build on. Some things we like specifically are Pytail is pretty straightforward to program in, and it gets transpiled into like Algorand's native language, Teal, and that's all like a pretty seamless, straightforward process that you know wasn't too much of an entry barrier for us. Uh, I think we like how easy it is to like spin up a node and spin up your own kind of like sandbox testing environment because some of this I think can be pretty painful to get set up on like Ethereum. And I think Algorand's done a really good job of streamlining the process of getting a really nice testing environment in where you can start spitting out smart contracts, you know, playing around with them and seeing that they're doing the desired functionality you want. So so far the experience has been really really good I'd say and. We're also like really excited because we see a ton of fast progress coming. So maybe John, you can touch on this. Like we've seen a number of instances where when we first started, like maybe we're missing some functionality we wanted, but like it's already coming out or about to come out. So I think we're really excited with the prospect of like where the ecosystem is going. Yeah, there there is uh you know because we I spent some time developing uh, within uh, the Ethereum ecosystem, just like doing side projects. Um, before I, you know, was uh, dead set on building an Algorand. And there's a lot of things that, you know, make developing uh, in other, um, you know, frameworks a bit easier. And then when I thought, like, oh, we need something, like, for example, we can talk about this a bit later, about the fact of, uh, you know, a smart contract making function calls or also doing transactions. This is something that makes uh, creating a, a very uh, sleek UI UX for the user uh, easier. So, you know, we thought of this uh, weeks ago and then it, we found out that, you know, this is already in like the development pipeline and it's coming out with ABM 1.0. So, you know, it's clear to me that the uh, core developers of Algorand uh, and, uh, uh, you know, in Teal and PyTeal are very focused uh, in making the development experience uh, uh, very seamless. Um, and I think that's important from a high level because, you know, Algorand sort of, um, this independent ecosystem. I think one way to attract talent there is to make the dev tools uh, and the experience uh, you know, for creating uh, protocols uh, a lot easier. And so there's definitely a focus on that, which is good to see. Awesome. Well, let's before we go, let's talk a little bit about timing. Um, do you have any uh, sense of when you're going to launch still by the end of the year, things on track? Yeah, I mean, we're we're getting uh, some code reviews now, uh, and we're also going to do an audit, uh, at, you know, at some point in October. So we're we're optimistic that we can roll, you know, following the audit uh, and feedback there, get something out um, at the end of the year. Uh, but of course, our our focus is delivering something that is uh, totally bulletproof. Yeah. Um, which we anticipate uh, a lot of liquidity being put into uh, letting protocols. Um, and that not only grow over time, so that you know that's the focus. Um, but yeah, we are we're, we're trying to move aggressively though, uh, because there's a lot. Where our early community is very excited for us to launch. Yes, uh, we see that conversation happening online. Um, and anyone who's joining in Decipher will be able to meet you guys in Miami, right? Yeah, we're gonna be there in person. Looking forward to it. Yep. Awesome. Yes. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you there and keep us posted and um, we'll talk to you again soon. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Alexa. Thanks so much. Bye. Yeah.